Most men don't know that gender is as important in our lives as women understand it is in theirs. I mean, if you teach a course called something like Psychology of Women, Sociology of Women, you get 95% women. Teach a course called Psychology of Gender, Sociology of Gender, you get 90% women. Most men don't think that gender is about them, and this is political. So let me talk a little bit about how I think this is political and wh why we need to do this. Um, let me tell you my own story about this, um, how I first became aware of some of these. Uh, 25 years ago, I was finishing my PhD, uh, and, and, and uh, I was teaching at a local university not far away uh, from, uh, from my graduate school. And you know how new faculty and graduate students get. We get, you know, we get new ideas come along, and we get, oh, this is so exciting. Let's talk about them. And so one day we were sitting around, a bunch of my friends and I were sitting around, and we said, there is a, there's an explosion of writing and thinking in feminist theory, but there's no courses yet. So we did what graduate students and new faculty typically do in that situation. We say, let's have a study group. We'll get together once a week. We'll read a text. We'll talk about it. We'll have a potluck. So each week, 11 women and me got together. <laughs> we would read some text in feminist theory and talk about it. And during one of our meetings, I witnessed a conversation between two of the women that changed how I saw this forever. One of the women was white and one was black. The white woman said, now this is the part that's going to sound really 25 years old now. The white woman said, all women have the same experience as women. All women face the same oppression as women. All women are similarly situated in patriarchy. And therefore, she said, all women have a kind of intuitive solidarity or sisterhood. And the black woman said, I'm not so sure. Let me ask you a question. So the black woman says to the white woman, when you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror, what do you see? And the white woman said, I see a woman. And the black woman said, you see, that's the problem. Because when I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror, she said, I see a black woman. To me, race is visible. But to you, it's invisible. You don't see it. And then she said something really startling. She said, that's how privilege works. Privilege is invisible to those who have it. It is a luxury, I would say, to the white people sitting in this room not to have to think about race every split second of your life. That's what privilege is about. Privilege is invisible to those who have it. Now, you'll remember I was the only man in this group. So when I witnessed this, I kind of put my head in my hand and groaned and, uh, oh, no. Somebody said, well, what was that reaction? And I said, well, when I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror, I see a human being. <laughs> I'm kind of the generic person. You know, I'm a middle class white man. I have no race, no class, no gender. I'm universally generalizable. <laughs> um, so I like to think that was the moment I became a middle class white man. That class and race and gender were not about other people, but they were about me. I had to think about them. And it had been privileged that it kept them invisible to me for such a long time. Now, I'd love to tell you that that's the end of this story. But I was reminded of it just last semester. Uh, at, I have a colleague at, at Stony Brook uh, where I teach, and she and I both teach the Sociology of Gender course. So when it's my turn to teach it, she always comes to give a guest lecture for me. When it's her turn, I go to give a guest lecture for her. So I go to give the ge a guest lecture in her class, 300 students in the room, and as I walk in the door, one of the students looks up and says, oh, finally, an objective opinion. <laughs> All that semester, every time my colleague opened her mouth, what my students saw and heard was a woman. Shirley, if you were to stand up in front of my students and say, there is structural inequality based on gender in the United States, they would say, well, of course you'd say that. You're a woman. You're biased. When I say it, they go, wow, that's interesting. Is that going to be on the test? How do you spell structural? <laughs> so I want you to know, I hope you all in the back can see this. This is what objectivity looks like. <laughs> Disembodied Western rationality. Here I am. <laughs>